See, the prodigal son left, and the father never stopped him or told him, don't go. He just let him go. And the prodigal son found himself in the pig pen, and then right there talking to the pigs, he said, I need to go back to my father's house. So if, they, if, 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 if people need to leave, want to leave that, that meant to be in your life forever, then the pigs will bring them back. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So we've, we've learned that, amen, and, and, and both of these series are, are you know, they're side by side. Estas dos series están juntas porque, because it deals with family, deals with relationship. And, and as I was, uh, this week, as, as I was praying and as I was studying uh, about, you know, what to bring for this son, I said, God, I know we're, 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 we're going through a lot. There's families, there's marriages going through a lot. Uh, hay familias que han estado batallando. And God says, you know what? We have to identify who Satan is attacking. Tenemos que identificar a quién está atacando Satanás. Because when you know what his target is, then you know what to pray for. Cuando tú sabes cuál es, eh, eh, a qué es lo que Satanás está, cuál es el blanco de Satanás, dónde está atacando, tú vas a saber cómo orar. And a lot of the times we pray, but we don't know who, who, where is he coming from. Right? No sabemos de dónde viene. And one thing that you and I have to understand is something is that your children are very powerful. Yes. Yes. Let me say that again because I don't think y'all got it. Yes. Your children are very powerful. Yes. Tus hijos son tan poderosos that you don't even, sometimes you don't even know what you got inside your house. A veces no sabemos qué es lo que tenemos dentro de nuestra casa por el poder que tienen tus hijos. See, Satan's job has always been from the beginning to destroy the children. Amen? Amen? Because in the book of Genesis, there was a word that was spoken that was very powerful in the libro de Genesis. Fue una palabra que se fue hablada y es una palabra muy poderosa and it was this. God told Eve, Eve, I'm going to put a seed in you and that seed will crush Satan's head. Amen. Dios le dijo a Eva, Eva, voy a poner una semilla, la semilla que tú vas a tener en tu vientre va a, a venir a pisotear al diablo. So from that day forward, Satan has tried to destroy every child. Why? Because he doesn't know which is the one that's going to destroy him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so if, if you see it, it started with Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel, and still Cain still killing people today. Now they call it cocaine. Woo, and, and it's still killing people. And, and when, 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 when Cain killed Abel, you know, the enemy came in and said, you know what, that's it. I just caused a whole bunch of strife. Cuando Cain mató a Abel, el diablo dijo, ya, aquí se acabó todo, se terminó todo. But because Abel, because Cain, the Bible says that he left when he committed that, uh, uh, that murder. Remember, he came up to the Lord, and what did the Lord say? Cain? Your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. It's how powerful the blood was. And, he, and the Bible says that he ran and he left. But if you read in a couple of chapters later, cuando lees los capítulos que vienen, I, don't, I believe it's chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken, capítulo 5 de, 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 de Genesis, it begins to, to describe the genealogy of Adam. Empieza a describir la genealogía de Adam, and nowhere in that, in that genealogy talks about Cain or Abel. If you read it, Cain and Abel are not mentioned in there. They are not any more part of Adam and Eve. Why? Because when something is destroyed, God will replace it with something much better. Amen. Cuando algo es destruido, Dios tiene lo recompensa o te lo da con algo más mejor. Y si tú empiezas a ver la genealogía de Adam, Cain y Abel no están ahí. Why? Because that was something that was destroyed, but God says, I'm going to give you something new. Anybody want something new today? Yeah. So, we have to understand something. If you go with me to the book of Joel, chapter 2, and verse 28 and 29, it's a very familiar scripture that we want to read today. En Joel, capítulo 2, versículo 28, una escritura muy poderosa, I'm going to go real quick, just real quick, amen? Is that okay? Can you handle it? I'm worried up, my, it's my wife's fault. I'm wired up right now. She gave me some coffee. Actually, I made the coffee. I wired up myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> she she woke up jumpy today. She 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 woke up jumpy today. She was like, all right, let's go. And I was like, 
She said, go get some coffee. And I got coffee and I put, a I think, a little bit too much sugar on mine. So I'm a little bit jumpy. Is that okay? I'm going to be all right, man. I'm going to run about two miles right now. In my mind. In my mind. <laughs> I'm not going to run it right now. In my mind. I see myself already running. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28, listen to what it says. Very powerful scripture. You need to grab a hold of this word. It says like this. It says, And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons, your daughters, will what? Prophesy. Prophesy. Yes. Let me read that again because I know two or three of you got it. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Yes. You mean that most closer one? Yeah, that one. He's going to prophesy. You mean that one that couldn't pass cut? That one right there. He's going to prophesy. Hallelujah. You gotta be. You have to begin to see them how God is seeing them. Yep. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. My God. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Declares the Lord. Mm. My God. That is powerful. Your kids will prophesy. Your kids will see visions. Your, your kids are so powerful that Satan is trying to destroy your children. Yeah, yeah. And somebody needs to be alert or aware of this. Satanás quiere venir a destruir a tus hijos. La Biblia dice en Joel capítulo 28 y 29 dice que en los últimos días él iba a derramar de su espíritu sobre toda carne. Amén. Y dice que vuestros hijos y vuestras hijas van a profetizar. Amen. You know what the problem is? is? Sometimes we don't trust what we have in the house. No, no, a veces no confiamos en lo que tenemos en la casa, not knowing that what you have in your house is more powerful than what's outside of your house. Yeah, lo que está dentro de tu casa está más poderoso que lo que está fuera de tu casa, aleluya. Yeah. So Jesus, uh, on occasions, aleluya, when, when, when he was in, when he started his ministry, if you recall, aleluya, he delivered, they brought him a, a, a boy who was uh, sick, he had uh, epilepsy. A text. You remember? In Mark chapter 9, verse 21. You don't have to go there. I'm just going to tell you the scripture. In Mark chapter 9, verse 21, they brought this, this young boy to him. And they said, how long has he been? They said, since he was born. Since childhood. Desde that niño. Hallelujah. And another occasion, they brought him a, 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 a young girl. Hallelujah. That was the demon possessed. It's in Mark chapter, uh, I mean, Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. They brought this girl and he told the same thing. How long has she been like this? They said since she was a baby. And you have to understand something. That Satan's attacking your children from the from the, the smallest one to the oldest one. Right. Right. Amen. Satanás está atacando a tus hijos desde el más pequeño hasta el más grande. When Pharaoh found out that there was a king to be born, there was a savior to come in and yeah. save the people from bondage, his name was Moses, this is what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh sent people to go kill every firstborn. <laughs> he said, I want you to go into the houses and I want you to kill everybody, every child, kill them. Why? Because one of them is the one that's going to save the world. Yeah. But the mom, hallelujah, when she heard what Pharaoh was going to do, cuando escuchó la mamá lo que Faraón iba a hacer, she automatically took, in other words, she protected what she had, and she put it in the safe place, in, in, in that river, and, and put it along, and the Bible says that she followed it. Never once did she leave it alone. Nunca lo dejó solo, but she followed it and guided to make sure that it did not get something. That is a prophetic right there for you parents, hallelujah, that you have to be able to guard your children so that they will not go astray. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. And the Bible says that she saw Moses going all the way to its destination, and when he came and Pharaoh's daughter came and saw the baby, she automatically came up and said, I'll take care of that baby. And Pharaoh's daughter did not know who she was, not knowing that she was getting paid to take care of her own son. The devil will come in and pay you, my God. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that Moses, my God, was able to, listen, they gave him the best study. They gave him the best clothing. They gave him everything. And he was in the enemy's camp, hallelujah, getting taught in there, hallelujah. But there came a time there came a time when God began to speak to Moses and said, Moses, let my people bring him out of bondage. 
And the Bible says that Moses did as the Lord commanded him to do. And he brought him out from Egypt and didn't take him to the promised land. He just took him into the desert. But Joshua took him into the promised land. Yes. My God. But I'm here to tell you the importance of taking the attack of Satan is on your children. Your children are being attacked daily. See, the struggles that your kids have today is nothing compared to what we have. Right, right. The, the, the struggles that your kids have right now, they don't compare to what we went through when we were young. Come on, somebody. Right. They didn't go through half of the things that we that we went through in school. Come on, somebody. Right. All, the, all this stuff, they didn't go through half of the stuff we're going through. But I'm here to tell you that they're the next generation coming up. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. He's powerful. In the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 16 you see where uh, hallelujah, uh, 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 King Herod sent out when he found out that there was going to be a king. See King Herod thought he was the king of kings but he found out that there was a king of kings that was coming, that was going to be born. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, His name was yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Cuando, cuando el rey Herodes se dio cuenta o escuchó que iban a ser un rey, what did he do? He said, I want you to go out and I want you to kill every Hebrew boy that you find out there. What, every Jew. Why? Because there's a king about to be born. Hallelujah. And he can't take my throne. Hallelujah. And God, see, Jesus didn't want to take his throne because Jesus' throne was a lot greater than him. Hallelujah. Amen. My God. So he went and had people go out and try to kill, but he cannot kill what God, hallelujah, has placed in. I'm here to tell you that the devil cannot destroy you, hallelujah, and God placed you here. There ain't no devil in hell that can take you out. Amen. My God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And we have to understand that our children have been called and anointed by God. And the enemy's job is to try to destroy them. The enemy's job is to try to get your children against each other, against the parents, against the, the mom. And that's what we talked about last week about how the prodigal son left. Hallelujah. And he left and he told his dad, you know what? I'm, I'm leaving the house. Give me everything that belongs to me. Hallelujah. And the, part, and the dad just gave him everything. He said, okay, go. Hallelujah. And he let him go. And he let him do everything that he needed to do. Not once did he go after him. Not once did he call him. But the father was looking through the window. The Bible says he was looking to see if his son would come Back. But one day, say one day. One day. Say one day. One day. Say one day. One day. One day the pig brought them back. The pig spoke to them and said, Man, you're a dummy. You had it better in your, in your dad's house. And the Bible says that the son came to his senses and he said, You know what? It's a lot better in my dad's house. Yes. It's a, I had everything I wanted over there. But he just began to see, Hallelujah. It is great right now. Listen, the thing that your sons are going through right now, it may seem good to them right now. And sometimes you just got to let them go and let the priest bring them back home. Hallelujah. Yes. Because the Peace will bring them back. Yeah. My God. Amen, somebody. Amen. So you have to understand that now, because Jesus didn't, was not killed, he lived, and he, because Jesus lives, now we're able to live. Ahora porque Jesús vive, ahora nosotros podemos vivir. And we can enjoy freedom. Podemos gozarnos de esa libertad. Que Jesús mismo nos dio. Jesus gave us freedom. Come on, somebody. Yes. He gave us freedom. And now, listen. Now, you have to understand that I, I believe it was, let me, let, me, let me check here my notes. I believe that it was in 1973. 1973. They began to legalize a, a, a child abortion in, in, in different countries. Empezaron a legalizar el aborto de niños. Why? Why? Because Satan says, there's somebody that is going to come. There's a Joshua. There's a Moses. There's a Daniel coming out. There's a Hebrew boat coming out. There's a Deborah. There's a Rebecca coming out. There's somebody coming out. Hallelujah. And I cannot let them survive. So what did he do? He started doing this. And now in a lot of the states in the United States, they're legalizing abortion. They're, 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 they're going out there and killing innocent children. Why? Because the enemy says, I can't let them be born. Right. And, and the enemy comes in and tries to deceive the mind of the people. El enemigo viene a echarle mentiras al pueblo, a la gente. Why? Because he tells them, you don't need to, you don't need a child right now. Then why why'd you do it? Right? right? And, and, and the enemy is trying to come in and kill it. Why? Because he says, one of them is going to destroy me. Oh, yeah. See, see, Herod was scared with one. Yeah. 
Herodes tenía miedo porque un rey iba a nacer. Oh my God, I, I hope you get this. Yeah. See, now he's not just worried about one. Oh my God. He's not just worried about one person. Because it could be your son, it could be your son, it could be your son, it could be your it could be a lot of sons, hallelujah, that are gonna rise up, hallelujah, and begin to destroy the kingdom of the enemy. You might as well look at your kids and say, man, it might be you, it might be you, it might be somebody needs to get up and say, God, hallelujah, I thank you because there's kings in my house, hallelujah. I thank you, God, hallelujah, because the Bible says that he created us to be kings. That's why he's the king of kings. My God, we're not only child or children of God, but we're kings. Yes. No solamente somos hijos de un rey, pero nos hizo reyes. Por eso él es rey de reyes. Pastor, I'm not a king. Well, that's too bad. I'm sorry to tell you that if you don't believe you're a king, then you're not a king. Hallelujah. You might be a servant then. Hallelujah. But I am a king. Oh, pastor, yo no me siento como un rey. Ah, quizás a lo mejor eres nomás uno de los siervos. Pero yo soy rey. I am a king. I might, I might not look like a king to you, but I know inside of me there's kingdom. Hallelujah. I, I'm not of this world. That's why Jesus came to preach the kingdom. Why? Because he wanted to get us ready for the kingdom. Hallelujah. That kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where on earth. Hallelujah. As it is in heaven. Come on, somebody. You need to know who you are. Yes. You need to know. You need to know that in your house. There's power. Can you, my God, can you imagine, can you imagine how God, that's why the enemy doesn't want your children to be saved. That's why he doesn't want your children to be saved. Por eso el diablo no quiere que tus enemigos sean, tus hijos sean salvos. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Come here, honey. Come here, honey. Come here, baby. Sorry. Come on, honey. Oh. You all right, <laughs> Brother Gilbert, pray for Brother Gilbert. Just leave back there. Why, why is the enemy so upset, so mad, and trying to destroy? Because, listen, if the enemy is scared of her, okay, and she's powerful and she's anointed, because she is, can you imagine how he's going to shake when he puts us, when God puts us together? Yeah. Now he doesn't have to. Now he's not messing with one. Now he's messing with two. Yeah. Are you Are you understanding? Yes. Yes. So now we're coming to him with double. Yeah. Yes. We're coming. It, 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 it was her. The Bible says that one will put ten, a thousand to to fly, but two. Come on, somebody. Two will put what? 10,000. So now we grab the hole. So now my son, come and just hurry. Run, run, run to set. Come on, run, run to set. Hurry, run, run. You see how they run? They're very obedient children. Thank you. See, I have to call those things that are not as though they are. But, but listen, one will put 1,000, two will put 10,000. Now they get into the place where God, oh my God, where God calls them. And they begin to operate in the anointing that God has. Now the devil's not just worried about one or two. Oh my God. But now the children are coming. Woo! Now the children are coming. So now when you get up and say, devil, I'm not coming to you alone. And I'm not only coming in the name of the Lord. And I'm not only coming with the spirit of God. But my wife is coming with me. My husband is coming with me. And my kids are coming with me. Because now we're going to come in and take over and destroy you. And every one of your spirits that has came in to try to destroy. That's why the enemy is trying so hard to destroy you, your family, your children, your household. Why? Because they know if they are right, if they get into the place of God, oh my God, my kingdom will be destroyed. Hey, hallelujah. Oh my God. He knows. He knows that if we get into the place where we need to be, his kingdom will not stand. Because if his kingdom could not stand with Jesus himself, my God, 
he will not be able to stand with four that have Jesus in them. If he can't do it with one Jesus, he won't be able to do it with four people that have Jesus in them. Amen? So therefore, he comes in to try to destroy it. He brings animosity and, 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 and fight and strife within them two. And then all of a sudden, them two become us four. And all of a sudden, we're all fighting and bickering and going against each other. And the devil's sitting back and saying, hey, that's not going to destroy me. And he's right. That's right Pat, but when you all to line up and say, devil, I know who you are. Yes. And before we say another word, we say, ah, we're going to pray. Yes. Why? Because we all get into an agreement. Amen, yes. There's power. And unity. Yes, yes. And the Bible tells me that when one or two get in one accord, my God, oh, yes, yes. asking the same thing, <laughs> believing the same thing, yes. speaking the same thing, God says, I will be in the middle yes. and I will be there. Just like the three Hebrew boys, hallelujah. They weren't burning, they were just dancing and praising God in the fire. My God, I said, I'll be in the middle. I'll be seeing every one of you. And, and, and you have to understand something. I don't know if I said this last week, but it's but if they're saying it again, is that when the Hebrew boys were in the fire furnace, they didn't see Jesus at all. They were just praising God. Woo! Yeah. My God in the fire. My God in the storm. They were, but then the enemy, the king came in and looked at the hole and said, wait a minute. I threw three and there's four in there. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if you don't see Jesus, but as long as your enemy sees Jesus, that's all that matters. Hallelujah. Because when he sees Jesus, hallelujah, you'll take off running. My God. That's why your children are very important. That's why you have to take care of what you got in your house. Why? Because the enemy knows her calling, her calling, our calling, and the enemy was there. His calling, sorry. The, listen, let me tell you something. The enemy was there when God told Eve, your seed. The enemy was there. He heard. He heard God tell Eve, your seed, tu semilla, Eva, es la que va a destruir este diablo. Yes. Why do you think that the enemy is coming so hard at everybody? Why do you think the women are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit? God is doing something in the women because there's something that they're carrying. My God, there's a seed that you gave birth. And if you gave birth to a son or a daughter, I'm here to tell you, devil, you better watch out. <laughs> devil, you better watch out. It might be a doctor. It might be... Listen. My God. I said this before, and I'll say it again. I said it a while well, back. But I better say it again. Listen to this. You know why Daniel didn't get up or didn't get eaten in the, in the lion's den? Let me tell you why Daniel didn't get eaten in the lion's den. It wasn't so much because of his prayer, but it was because he wasn't walking in the flesh. My God. And you know that the lions, well, as soon as they smell flesh, they're going to come in and devour him. Hey, the, see, you're walking in the flesh. That's why you got the enemy. The enemy, the lion. The Bible says if you study the lion, the lion will always go to the younger ones. They will always go to the one that gives them less trouble. Mm. That's a word for somebody right there. The enemy, if, if you study the, study the light, study how they, 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 they study their prey, how they're going to get their, their, see, they're always looking, and they always look for the young ones. They can't get to the mom, but they can get to the kids. That's a word for somebody. They can, listen, they might not be able to get to you, but they'll get to your kids. Because the Bible says that the lion, is, that the devil's like a roaring lion, he's going to, see what you're, which is walking in the flesh. Who's, who smells like flesh? And because Daniel was always in the spirit, he didn't smell like flesh. See, see, we, we're always walking in the flesh, and you wonder why the enemy's attacking you. Get in the spirit! Get in the spirit! The Bible says to walk in the spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when Daniel was in there, Daniel was just in there praying, and the lions were just going around and just going, and they didn't smell him. Why? Because he didn't smell like flesh. No olía carne, por eso los, los no lo devoraron. Porque él andaba en el espíritu. Amen. Orando. He was praying, he was crying out to God. Amen. You need to rise up. And you need to get up and say, devil, you're not going to take my children. You're not going to take my house. You're not going to take my kids. You're not going to take my wife. you got to protect your wife. Why? Because she's going to be carrying the seed in there. 
She may be carrying the next king in there, hallelujah, that's going to come in and destroy, hallelujah, the kingdom of the enemy. Come on, somebody. No, she's not pregnant. No, she's not pregnant. Get that review, Kevin, and then she's just... I was just using her as an example. Now I was just using her. She's not pregnant. No, no. Company closed. Company closed. My God. But if the Lord decides to give us one. I always say, if it's God's will. But but no, that's why I, that's why I want grandkids. So I tell my, my son, hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry. I need a grandchild. Amen, but she threw me off, right? Man, the enemy is trying to destroy your kids. What are you doing to protect your children? What are you doing to protect that which is in the house? In your house. ¿Qué estás haciendo para proteger lo que está en tu casa? Remember, Moses' mom took care of him and watched him as he was going in the river and, it, and then there was a, a current or whatever she made sure she watched him and made sure that if anything I, I can almost guarantee you that if that little basket flipped she was diving in there that's right, that's right. I can almost guarantee you that when Moses' mom was watching him go through there and that basket something happened she was diving in there right. shoes no shoes earrings no earrings makeup no makeup if they already did their hair she didn't care she was going to jump in there why? because that was the next thing that was going to come in and save the people while they to come up with that. That's why, that's why moms will do anything for their kids. Yes. Yes. Moms are not scared to go up against the enemy. Sometimes we men are. Sometimes. But the women, they are not scared to face the enemy. They're going to come in and fight the enemy. You touching my kid? That's right. Uh-uh. What'd you say? <laughs> you remember that time? Right? What'd you say? Ah, uh, hold on. Yeah. The mom would always come in and fight to protect what she had. You might get mad at the husband. You might make him mad and it's all right. But when you make mama mad, when you make mama mad, my God, yeah, when you make her mad, all hell is going to break loose in your house. My God, make her mad and see if you eat again. Make her mad and see if she'll wash your, your clothes again. Make her mad and see if she'll cook for you that hot dinner. Come on, somebody. You can make the dad mad. You can come in and talk about the dad, but don't talk about my kids. Yep. Yep. Come on, somebody. There's something about a mother and the love for their children. Because you have to understand that they carried them for nine months. There was an intimacy between the mom and the son. And I'm not, get it out of your mind. You're talking about, no, it's not sexually. Because moms talk to their kids. Anybody talk to your kid when they was in the belly? Oh, it's just I, I will talk to my child. I will go in there and talk to her. I will go in there and sing to her. Even though I, I don't have to sing. I don't have to know how to sing. Now, I know she didn't tell me from within, you don't know how to sing, Daddy. No. <laughs> right? Can you say it? Better not. <laughs> but when I would sing to her, she would move. But there's something about the mom and how strong they are. Amen. Amen. You teenagers, you better be careful. Mm. Y'all think you think fighting with a guy is something hard? Try fighting with a girl. Well, or with the mom. Mom is going into that bus, going to that kid that told you something, something going in and say, what you say, boy? Kind of like the Madea kind of say something else. Say something. I'll be right here at 3 o'clock. I'll be waiting for you. I got something for you. I'll be waiting right outside. 3 o'clock. I know what's on the bus. Come on, somebody. You know it. You know it. The mom will go all the way to the neighbor's house. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you touch one of my aunt's children, that's my cousin over there, but if you touch one of my aunt's children, she didn't care where you lived. She didn't care who it was. She would go all the way into your house, grab you by the hair, 
and bring you outside and beat on you when you told something to my kids. And you know what? She's this high. That's how high. One day, one day, they put her dad in jail. They put her dad in jail because he was drunk. So they put him in jail. Never done that. She went into the police station. And they began to cuss out every cop that was in there. Got the keys. Took the dad out of jail. Say, don't you ever touch him again. She got him out and she walked out. They know who she is. She don't play around. That's in Mexico. That's not here. You're like, oh, we didn't see that on TNN. <laughs> You didn't see it on CNN, but let me say N N Español. Telemundo. I'm just playing. But but what I'm trying to tell you is the instinct of a mom. Yes, that's right. I'm trying to tell you how, listen, you cannot destroy what, what, what God has placed in her. That's why Mary followed Jesus. And and, and if she could, if she could. She probably would have gone against every one of those soldiers. She could have done it. And there's no doubt in my mind. She probably would have lost. But there's no doubt in my mind that she would have gone in there to destroy every one of those soldiers that did something to Jesus. But she understood something. She understood that he had a calling. And that it was meant for him to go through this mess. And she had to eat up everything. My God for him to go. And she told the disciples, whatever he says, you better listen to him. And I'm here to tell you that a mom, once they know how the calling that God has placed in their children, they will guard it, protect it. That's the way we are with our kids. Where are you going? Who's going with you? Where are you going? Where are you going to be there? How long are you going to be there? Why? Why? My wife tells my kid, if you're not here at 11, I'm calling the cops. I'm calling the cops. You're not be here at 11, I'm going to call the cops. Hey, I'm preaching, so don't talk. He, she, 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 will, she will call the cops. And you might say, that's me. No. She's guarding what's inside of him. Because there's something great. In him, there's something great in her, and we gotta guard it. Why? Because the enemy's trying to come in and attack them. And once you find out what you got in your house, you're gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna say, That way, you're gonna get here. You're gonna pass on. You gotta go through mama first. You go to daddy. You might be daddy, but you're not gonna be mama. Huh? You're not. You're not gonna be mama. Why? Because mama gonna take off her earrings, her shoes, her chocolate, her media, her makeup gonna be all smeared, all that stuff. Hallelujah. But once you get through, mama's gonna say, I knew it. I got it. Hey, come on, somebody. I And if you don't know what you have in your house, it's sad. Why do you think the enemy started to destroy so many houses? Why? God says, oh, they will prophesy. They will see visions. Joseph was a visionary. Joseph was a visionary and then he liked them in his house. And Joseph went from the house to the pit. And when he got to the pit and he looked around, he saw nothing but mud in that hole. And he said, this is not the vision. So he learned to dance in that pit because he said, this is not my place. So he went from the hole to being sold in slavery. And he looked around and said, this is not the vision. So I might as well just dance while I'm going through. Because if he gets you through, he's going to get you too. My God, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that he went from being a slave to prison. And when he looked around in prison, he said, no, this is not the, not the palace. It must be something else. But when he came to the palace, he went from jail to the palace. He said, oh, this is what I was dreaming. This is the vision that I saw. Esta la visión que yo vi en palacio. 
and still you being in the right calling, you'll always have a Pharaoh's wife who will try to come in and deceive you and try to get you away. My God. But he went into jail again. He said, oh, this is the devil is alive. And then he came again from jail to the palace. And that vision that he had came to pass. Was fulfilled. Why? Because he learned to praise God in every season of his life. He never gave up. So you may be going through a season in your life where it's all hell. Praise God. Praise God. I told the church, I told you this last week. You can't learn to dance in your promised land until you learn to praise God in your desert. When you're going through everything, that's when you got to praise God. There's a song that we used to sing in Spanish. It used to say, Quiero una alabanza en vez de tu quejar. He says, I want you to praise me instead of complaining. Because we have gotten so used to complain to God. And God said, don't complain to me. Praise me while you're going through. He said, even though I walk through. Through. He didn't say, I'm going to stay in the valley. He said, I'm going to walk through. He said, even walking through, he said, you will be there with me. He said, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy, my God. Some of you are running from your enemies. God said, no, I'm going to sit you right there with your enemies. <laughs> see, some of you don't want to sit with your enemies. Some of you, you, you go into a restaurant, you see somebody there, you're like, oh, you ready, let's go there. <laughs> you go into Walmart, and you go to Walmart, hallelujah, and you go into an eye, you see them, you're like, oh, I don't think it's right here. I think it's on the other eye. And you always run away from your enemy. And God said, nah, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence, hallelujah, of your enemy. Meaning that when you're in front of your enemy, you got to learn to eat through mm -hmm. Savoring this mm, this is good. My child, you, you want some, hallelujah. And the Bible says that if your enemy comes in and asks you for some, go ahead and give them some of that stuff, hallelujah. Go ahead and give them. Don't tell them, hallelujah, to go to hell, hallelujah. Because they might just go to hell. But listen, they, you, you need to give them the word yes. before they make a decision to go to hell. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your God. My God. He said, I will let you eat in peace. I will let you rest in peace. If you just let go and let God and take care of what you got in your house. See, I'd be careful with what I got in my house. Because I know the calling that is upon your life. Just by the simple fact that I know that the enemy tried to kill her. The devil said she's not going to be born. Two years. That's all we give her. Two years. Like that the devil is alive. Yeah, yeah. Amen. The devil tried to take him. They will try to take up my take my other side. Got a gash on his head. From here to here. 73 stitches. His whole side of this was like that hanging. It was hanging out. Never lost conscious. Grabbed the hand of him. Took him to the hospital. The doctor said, what are you doing here? Boy, you should be dead. That's what you think. That's what you think. But there's a voice up there in heaven that has a calling and place something in his life. Yeah. My other daughter, Bianca, the cord, the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck. The doctor said, we got to go in and do C-section quick because she only had seconds to live. They went in there, took her out. He said, we barely got a hold of her. Every one of my children has a calling in their life, so I have to guard it. And after the enemy has gone through me and he thinks I'm going to give him a fight, he don't know. <laughs> See, I tell people here, they come and talk to me because I'm a little bit more passive. And all I have to say is, I'm going to tell Pastor Rachel. They're like, ooh, don't tell Pastor Rachel. Please don't tell Pastor Rachel. Don't, don't, don't let her get a hold of us. Why? Because she might not say it as nice as I do. Because when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of her, she's going to tell you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And it might, you might not like it, but if you can receive it, I can guarantee you that you're going to survive. That you're going to make it. Right? Right? Mama don't play. Mama don't play. She don't play, right? Why? Because the time is almost near. We can't be playing games no more. It's time to get real. Time to fight. You know why your children have not become what God called them to be? It's because you haven't become what God called you to be. They're waiting on you. 
you kids are waiting on you to become more God. See, you're too busy running. I'm here to tell you that if you're too busy running, there's a there's a way of waiting to spit you out. There's a way of waiting to spit you out. If you are not willing to get into the presence of God, there's a furnace, fiery furnace waiting like a three Hebrew voice. Yes. Come, on, Come, on. Come on, somebody. Yes. You have to get into the place. This is what God called me to do. God called me to be here. God called me to do this. You gotta protect what you have at house. Some of you you have kids that are skilled at, at, at one area or another. You have kids that are good singers. You have some that play instruments. You have some that are good with computers. You have some that can be used in the church, in the ministry. And the devil says, no, nah, I can't let them. I can't let them. And you're allowing them. But you have to stand up and say, I'm a devil. Mm -hmm. My kids are going to become what God called them to be. Yeah, and I'm going to stand here and I'm going to make sure that my son, my daughter, become what God called them to be. I don't, see, I don't look at my kids how they are right now. I look at them how God sees them already. You might see your kids, they might be all messed up. They might be in drugs. Some of them might be in jail. Some of them, don't look at them like that. Look at them how God created them. Yes. Yes. They might be rebellious right now or hard-headed or whatever you, you, you think. Look at them how God sees them. Yes. My son is a mighty man of God. Yes. My daughter is a mighty woman of God. Yes. And I don't care what the world tells me and I don't care what anybody is. I believe what he says and that's all that matters to me. Yes. Why? Because the Lord says that in the last days, and that's what we're living, He's going to pour out His Spirit upon their life. Listen, I might not run a mile or two, but I can tell you that they can run a mile or two. I might not do stuff, but they can do stuff. I might not have the energy all day, but I can guarantee you that they got energy and more than they... Come on, somebody. So what I cannot do, I know that they can do. I know. So I got to guard them. I got to protect them. Tengo que protegerlos. Tengo que cuidarlos. Porque lo que yo no puedo hacer, ellos lo pueden hacer. And greater things will they do. Yeah. See, this is what I started. I might not be able to finish it, but they can finish it. Yeah. Jesus said, I came in to start something, but you guys got to finish it. Yeah. Jesus said, three years I came in to start something in this world. He said, I came to re revolutionize this world. He said, but you got to finish it. Now go into other world yeah. and finish what I started. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you might have started something, but your children are going to finish it. What are you leaving your kids? What kind of legacy are you leaving your kids? Listen, when we talk about what are we leaving, we always think about money. We always think, well, I don't know. I might not, listen, I might not have enough money to leave them, but if I can leave them the Spirit of God, if I can leave them the, the teachings of God in their life, that is worth more than all the money in the world. Because the Bible says that that will create wealth. It will create, they, they will create wealth. And I might not leave you money, but if I leave you the, 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 the teaching of the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and I'll be a good example to you, I believe that that is worth more yes. than anything else. Because I can guarantee you there's people with a lot of money right now that are sitting somewhere with a bottle of liquor in one hand and a gun in the other and saying, why should I? There's millionaires trying to take their life away that they can't handle. I would rather let them live in peace than the cares of this world Amen. with the peace of God. Amen. You need to identify what you have in your house. And whatever is inside your house, don't blame them. Blame the enemy that's attacking your children. See, we fight against our children and it's not them. It's, it, it's the enemy attacking them. You don't pray you know, to, 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 for you. You pray for your children, but you pray to the enemy to say, devil, you get your hands off my kids. You don't ask him. You don't ask, you never ask the devil. You tell him. Yes. 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 See, some of us go to, the, can you please let, come on, devil, can you please, just, please just let my son go, please? No, you tell him, devil, the word says that my children, my house, will serve the Lord. Yes. So get your, you, you got, you, you don't have three days? You don't have three days, you don't have ten days, you don't have a month. You're not waiting till the first of the month to move out. No, right now. You get all your stuff, get all your mess, pack up and go. Because this day, from this day forward, we are going to serve God. We are going to, come on somebody, we are going to live right. Somebody needs to stand up and say, devil, no more. You remember, you remember drawing the line? You remember drawing the line? When you were in school? Draw the line. 
You cross that line, that's it, it's over. You have to cross, you have to draw that line. Devil, you can't cross this line no more. That's it. You're not having access to anybody in my life. That's it, that's enough. I'm tired of going through the same, same thing. Year after year, month after month, week after week, day after, I'm tired, that's it, devil. No more. I draw the line. And it's drawn with the blood of Jesus. And you can't cross it. I need somebody to stand up right now and say, God, you know, that the enemy is not having my kids. I need somebody to fight for their kids. I need somebody to come in and fight for their children. I need somebody to, to recognize and identify what it is that they have in their house. Necesito que alguien identifique qué es lo que tiene en su casa. El diablo no puede atacar a tus hijos. God is with you. Listen. If you have kids that are struggling, if you have children that are going through stuff right now, whatever it is, whatever spirit of the enemy has came over them, whatever it is, you need to let God come in and let God free them. Amen. So this is what I want you to do right now. 